So this is actually a very, very exciting area of uh, research. And uh, there were really uh, two independent laboratories that were pursuing this. Uh, one was uh, the laboratory of Rami Burstein and uh, colleagues at Harvard. And uh, Rami had uh, uh, investigated the uh, underlying basis for photophobia. So this is uh, the um, hypersensitivity of uh, patients with migraine to light. And he was able to investigate the effects of different colors of light and found that green light was actually less aversive than of other uh, colors of light. And actually saw that some of his patients actually showed an improvement in pain with, with the green light. And so that was quite an amazing uh, discovery. At the same time, uh, at the University of Arizona, uh, one of our clinicians, uh, Mohab Ibrahim, had independently begun studies of the effects of green light on pain. And, um, and so he was exposing rodents with pain, different pain models to green light and showing that green light actually was producing uh, pain relieving uh, effects. And so just recently, uh, Mohab uh, published in Cephalalgia uh, a paper where he did uh, an assessment of um, uh, patients, patient self-report uh, with migraine, uh, where they underwent uh, green light therapy or white light therapy for some period of time, sort of a crossover study. And they uh, filled in questionnaires. And what he showed was that the green light, uh, so um, I think it was two hours of green light per evening for some period of weeks, actually produced a decrease in the frequency of their migraines and the intensity of their migraines and uh, beneficial effects from a number of different points of view. You know, uh, I think that, first of all, that outcome has to be validated in a much more rigorous study. Um, and so hopefully that will occur. And then secondly, if the outcome is shown to be true, then what is the mechanism by which green light can produce improvements in migraine uh, or in other kinds of pain? So we don't know that. Mohab had shown that uh, uh, it depends on the visual system. So if you put contact lenses on rodents and expose them to the green light, the green light has no uh, beneficial action. So it, it is dependent upon um, input to the visual system. Um, but then what is the consequence of that? How does that translate into improvements in, uh, in responses to pain? That's, this is something we don't know. So um, the reason that this, I think, is important is that it's highly translatable. Uh, humans can experience green light therapy themselves quite easily. We have all kinds of therapies that we can use for the treatment of uh, disease states in humans. These include um, uh, pharmaceutical therapies, for example. All of these have some level of side effects, but the, the side effect profile of something like green light is almost non-existent. I mean, as far as we can tell, there is no downside of green light therapy. So um, if this were proven to be effective, then it would be hugely important because pretty much anybody can, can do it uh, with, uh, without uh, any significant risk of any deleterious uh, outcomes. Uh, and so I, I think it's exciting. Um, it's just emerging. We'll have to see where this goes. I think uh, the group from uh, Dr. Burstein and Dr. Ibrahim uh, are driving this, uh, uh, this question forward. And it's very exciting to see where this will lead.